so we have uh the sandman now i've told y'all this uh last time the sandman is one of the best visually adapted shows i've seen from a graphic novel to tv like outside of you know uh the lord of the rings trilogy and all that that was probably a really good one to say hey the books did this and you put this right on screen the sandman is right there with that you know the, the sandman took all the visual concepts straight from the comics and they found the perfect way to put it on screen i mean when they say you in a dream it looks like a dream right like they 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 nailed it so again if you have not watched the sandman on netflix i strongly suggest that you go watch that it is absolutely fantastic i love it um and i would also recommend reading the comic or the graphic novel like it's also pretty good um but like if you liked things like uh american gods if you like the writing you know the um like kind of the uh the the anthropomorphic uh the personifications of of um you know uh, of death of desire of you know all these if you like those type of things that fantasy that sci-fi then the sandman is definitely for you uh for me i'm just sitting here like yo this is dope especially with my you know seminary training and stuff and world religions and all that so like all this stuff i'm just soaking it up like i just i'm having a whole field day with this but what i will say is that I actually started, um, I always knew about the writer, the creator, Neil Gaiman, right? I always knew about him, um, but I never really followed him. I, I never really checked for him like that. But recently, my man has been going off on Twitter. Like, he has just been saying things left and right, just dropping these nice little, like, he's actually a pretty cool person to follow, right? So, apparently, Sandman was, like, number one. It was doing crazy numbers on Netflix, right? But it can, you know, and you would assume that if something is doing, if, it, if something is sitting at number one for a long time on your pro, on on Netflix, if it's getting a lot of attention, if it's getting a lot of hype, you would think, as we just saw with 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 the last uh, with uh, you know them dragons, you would think renew, right? But apparently, that's not necessarily the case. It's it's according to Gaiman. Even though the show has some of the highest numbers, it's still not a guarantee for Netflix to pick it up and to keep it going. Why? Because according to Gaiman, the show is too expensive. Remember, I told you visually this thing is amazing, but because it's so expensive, Netflix needs a way to find they, they got to justify it. Right. So with that said, uh, a fan had asked uh, Neil Gaiman, like, yo, like, you know, if Netflix doesn't pick it up, then what? Well, Gaiman actually had some good news about this. And he says that um, they can bring the Sandman to other streaming platforms if Netflix doesn't produce season two. So that's actually pretty good. Here's the exchange. Um, you know, the fan says, Neil, it's more than lived up to expectations. Thank you. With all that talk of it being top stream show over the past two plus weeks, I don't understand why season two is even in question. And he says, because Sandman is a really expensive show and for Netflix to release the money to let us make another season, we have to perform incredibly well. So, yes, we've been top show, the top show in the world for the last two weeks, but that still might not be enough. That is wild to me. But here's where the hope comes in. Someone says, in case they continue, can you bring it to somewhere like Prime, Apple TV, Disney Plus, whatever? And he said, yes, he said, yes. Man, let me just say that I really like the fact that that's even an option because I don't really care if it's on Netflix or Amazon or HBO. I'm going to follow the Sandman wherever and watch that show. So I don't really care where it's at. So I'm happy for the Sandman. I'm not going to lie. This did make me a little bit sad that. This option, because I was always under the impression that, you know, a, a, a streaming platform just owned the IP rights to an original series or whatever. I just thought that, okay, if this is theirs, that's theirs. I just wish they could do this with Lovecraft Country. I'm not going to lie. This got me in my feels because I was like, damn, man, 
Why can't this option be the same for Lovecraft Country? Why can't like somebody else take that off their hands? Why can't Netflix take that away from HBO? Why can't Amazon go pay for that? Do you know? <sighs> I just want Lovecraft Country back. That's all. I just I just want it back. Please. Anybody. Like what what do we need to do? What needs to happen? Oh, oh. So talk about wasted potential. But anyway, I am happy for the Sandman that it at least has options. And whoever picks this up, whatever studio, you're going to get the eyeballs. You're going to get the money. You're going to get the subscriptions. So go ahead. I mean, if this thing did so well on Netflix, why wouldn't it do better somewhere else? So, yes, I hope that they actually uh, I hope Netflix renews it. But if they don't, oh, well, like, I'm just glad it can keep on going and not be stuck in purgatory the way that Lovecraft Country is right now. Ooh, HBO, I will never forget that. Ooh, irked me so bad with that. Anyway, <clears throat> how do you feel about this news with um, the Sandman at least having some hope uh, about the fact that it can continue to survive? Um, oh, but wait, I have to also share this other story because like I told y'all, Neil Gaiman is hilarious and he is such a great follow right so <clears throat> i gotta give y'all some background background on this too first of all let, okay let me say what happened so the sandman originally was pitched the sandman really should have been in production a long time ago like this movie has been kind of in production hell for a while <clears throat> and because it's been in production hell like it just it took a long time, obviously a lot of money for it to finally see the light of day. Right. But apparently. It also depended on like the people that were attached to the program, right, or to the project. And one of those people is a man named John <laughs> Peters. I'm going to give you John Peters background in a second, but. I want you to know what Neil Gaiman did with uh, John Peters. And John Peters is a producer. So Neil Gaiman says that he sabotaged John Peters' Sandman movie by leaking a really stupid script. So here's the thing. John Peters, this producer, was about to go ahead and make a movie for Sandman. This is what he wanted to do, right? And I think, especially if you've watched... Um, if you've watched uh, the Netflix series, I think that it's pretty safe to say that Sandman is a much better product as a TV series. It works a lot better that way, right? And in this movie, this was supposed to have uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Um, he was supposed to be the Sandman, right, in, in this movie. But Neil Gaiman purposely took the script and leaked it so that way it would just be sabotaged. But I, I want y'all to like actually read what happened and I'm gonna give, let me see. Should I? No, no, no. Let me give you the background on John Peters real quick. Just, just real quick. John Peters is a producer who it, it, it wouldn't even do me justice to tell you about him the better thing to do and i and i strongly recommend this i strongly recommend this i believe this is also on on netflix i'm not netflix it's on youtube for free i need you all to go look up this documentary it's the death of superman lives what happened this documentary in case y'all recall this was about the Nicolas Cage Superman movie that never saw the light of day. Yes, you've probably seen this, you know, picture somewhere in Nicolas Cage in this terrible Superman suit. And it, it's it's atrocious. I totally agree that it is terrible looking. It is very bad. But I need you to go watch this documentary again I believe the full documentary is on YouTube. I believe it is free. You could just watch it. But even if you can't, 
even if it's like two, three dollars to rent, please go rent this. The the basic gist for this documentary is this guy, John Peters, this producer. I'm not going to give it away because some of the stuff in this story is so wild. You're just not going to believe it. <laughs> By some crazy way, this guy found a way. I'm not going to tell you how. He found a way to get the rights to Superman. Okay. He found a way to get the rights to uh, uh, um to the Superman movie. So after Christopher Reeves and all that stuff, this man found a way to get the movie rights away from them. So because he owned the movie rights to Superman, nobody could do a, um, a Superman movie without his say-so. And yes, by the... Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Um, this was directed by uh, by John. Yes, rest in peace to him. Um, he was the director of this uh, documentary. Um, but... John Peters found a way to get the rights to Superman so nobody else can make a Superman movie without him, right? And because of this, he got, he wanted to get Kevin Smith, y'all remember Kevin Smith, and Tim Burton to come together to make a Superman movie. And he wanted Nick Cage, right? So I'm going to leave the story right there. But you have to listen to the stories from Kevin Smith and Tim Burton and everybody else and how crazy this dude, John Peters, was. I'll give you another hint. In the movie, because, again, couldn't nobody do nothing without John Peters say so, Kevin Smith would write up a script and be like, yo, this is going to be a dope Superman movie. Here you go. Here's the script. John Peters would be like, mm -mm, nope, I want a big old giant spider in there. Yup, I want a big old giant metal spider. And Kevin Smith was like, what? Like, what? What? And that was just one of the many terrible things that this guy had an idea for, right? Fast forward, John Peters is also the producer of Wild Wild West. And if you recall, Wild Wild West was one of the worst movies that Will Smith had ever been a part of. And if you have seen Wild Wild West, please recall the fact that what did they have in the movie? A giant robotic spider. That's John Peters for you. He's like bizarro Kevin Foggy. Whatever Kevin Foggy is, how great he is, John Peters is the complete opposite of that. OK, whatever it is. Now that you have that background story and again, please go watch that documentary because that documentary is still hilarious. The documentary has got so many good stories, wild stories. And I guarantee even the ending, even if you looked at this and was like, wow, this is whack. This is crazy. When you get done with this documentary, you might have a different change of mind. You might think differently. You might. Anyway. So, John Peters was attached to the Sandman as a movie. Right? So, again, now that you heard all that background information, you could kind of see where Neil Gaiman is coming from, where he was like, nah, man, like, I had to sabotage this thing because the script was really stupid. I want you to listen to how this went. Uh, so, a guy, okay. A guy in John Peters' office phoned me up. This is Neil talking. He said, a guy in John Peters' office phoned me up, and he said, so, Neil, have you had a chance to read the script we sent you? And I said, well, yes. Yes, I did. I haven't read all of it, but I've read enough. He says, so, pretty good? Huh. And I said, well, no, it really isn't. He said, oh, come on. There must have been some stuff in there that you loved. I said, there was nothing in there I loved. There was nothing in there I liked. It was the worst script that I've ever read by anybody. It's not just the worst Sandman script. That was the worst script I've ever been sent. 
<sighs> wow. So again, we're gonna go through if you if you've seen any of this, if you've seen the Sandman, just listen to some of this. Guyman went on to say, I'm not sure if it would have been an action movie or quite what it would have been. It was a mess. It never got better than a mess. He goes on to talk about how it's really stupid and the ideas Peters had. And Guyman said, it had a giant mechanical spiders. This man was going to put giant mechanical spiders in Sandman. He was going to put giant mechanical spiders in Superman. He put a giant mechanical spider in Wild Wild West. This dude is weird. He is weird. He is weird. What else the guy to say? Uh, Lucifer, Morpheus, a.k.a. Dream, and the Corinthian were identical triplets. They were a family of identical brothers, and it was all a race to see who could get the ruby, the helm, and the bag of sand before midnight on 1999, before the new millennium started, because whoever got it would be the winner. That was the plot. Didn't I tell you John Peters was bizarro Kevin Foggy? Didn't I tell you that? This man said it didn't get better than a mess. Like, you, you couldn't upgrade to recyclable? You couldn't even get to recyclable? You, It was just a mess. That's it. Anyway, I if you th- <laughs> I told y'all go watch this documentary. The documentary has some of the like I was I thought this dude was crazy. Like, because they actually interview him in the documentary. He's in the documentary. <laughs> I, I might just go rewatch it because it's one of the wildest stories I've ever heard. And it's one of those things where it's like. This is why everybody shouldn't have access to things like this is why, because you have some Hollywood execs out there that don't know what they're doing at all. But because they own stuff, because they have access to stuff, they are putting out hot garbage on the screen. I told y'all John Peters was bad. He is so bad. Christopher Nolan banned him from the set of Man of Steel. I told y'all they couldn't make Superman movies without this guy. But this is how bad he was. You know you bad if Christopher Nolan got to ban you from the set. Didn't I tell you he was a problem? I told you he was a problem. So how do y'all feel about Neil Gaiman, (laughs) giant metallic spiders, and the Sandman Let me know all your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching. This was just a segment of one of my live chats. And if you're interested in joining in on the next one, be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications for more. I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all. And until next time, I'll see you all later.